In this video, I'm going to show you how to tell the difference between the six common polymers using nothing but their density and some solutions um, which have a known density. So let's take a look at all these densities. These densities, by the way, are in grams per milliliter, which is the same as grams per cubic centimeter. Um, water has a known density of one gram per milliliter. So this means that any plastic that has a density lower than that is going to do what? It's going to float in water. And any plastic that has a density higher than that is going to sink in water. By the same token, we're going to use a couple of other um, liquids with a known density. So let's look at our chart and figure out how this is going to work. Now this is just on paper. If you, When you do it in real, um, real life using actual liquids, it's going to work the same way. But I, I, this is for demonstration purposes, so you can see on paper how it's going to work. So what I've done here on this page is um, created the, or, or lined up the, the various polymers based on their densities from lowest the highest. So the one with the lowest density is polypropylene, and the one with the highest density is PET, or, or polyethylene terephthalate. Now if we put these substances, if we put a, a, a piece of plastic, each of these plastics, in water, tell me which ones are going to float and which ones are going to sink. Well, we know that water has a density of 1. So anything with less than one is going to float. And then in our case here, it's going to be polypropylene, low-density polyethylene, and high-density polyethylene. And the ones that are going to sink are these three, polystyrene, PVC, and PET. Now the question is, how do we tell the difference between these and the difference between these? Because we want to isolate each of those. So let's look at, first, all the ones that floated. Now we're, what we're going to do is put them in isopropyl alcohol. We know that isopropyl alcohol has a density of 0.92. So now, which one, when we put all these three in isopropyl alcohol, which one is going to float? Well, if you look at this chart, you see that polypropylene is the only one that has a density which is lower than 70% alcohol. So that one's going to float. And these two should sink. So that's what happens here. Now, so now we've isolated polypropylene. It's the only one that's going to float in isopropyl alcohol. So we take that out. Now we're left, left with low-density polyethylene and high-density polyethylene. So now the question is, how do we tell low-density apart from high-density polyethylene? Well, what we do is we start adding water to alcohol. So what happens when we add water to alcohol? Water has a higher density than alcohol. So it's going to raise the density of this this alcohol solution when we start mixing some water in. Now in our case both of these uh, solutions sank in alcohol so as we start raising the density one of them is going to start floating and uh, one of them is going to remain sink uh, remain uh, having sank in, in, in that solution. So the question is what's going to start float floating first. Well, between low density and high density polyethylene, we see that high density has a higher density, and low density, as its name implies, has a lower density. So the one with the higher density is going to remain sunk the longest, and this one with the low density, low density polyethylene, should start floating up first. So the one that floats first is going to be low density, and the one that remains sank is high density. In this way, we've now isolated all three of these uh, polymers, and, and that's how we can tell them apart. Now let's go over to this side. These are the three plastics that sank in water, polysyrene, polyvinyl chloride, and, and polyethylene terephthalate. So what do we do now? Well, we take our calcium chloride solution, which has a density of 1.4, and we place these these all three of them, them inside it. But what's going to happen? Well, none of these have a density which is higher 
than calcium chloride. So they should all float. And that's exactly what you're going to see. None of them are going to sink, and all of them are going to float. So the question is, how do we tell them apart? Well, we do the same thing here to calcium chloride that we did to isopropyl alcohol. We start adding water. So what's going to happen when we start adding water to calcium chloride is, since water has a lower density than calcium chloride, it's going to lower the density of calcium chloride. It's going to start lowering it. So what's going to happen once this calcium chloride solution starts getting lowered? Well, when the solution reaches a density of 1.36, that density is going to be lower than, than uh, PETE, and what's going to happen is that PET is going to go down and sink in that solution first. And, and then what we're going to be left with is, is PS and PVC, polystyrene and, and uh, uh, polyvinyl chloride. So now we've isolated PET, and now we need to figure out which one is polystyrene and which one's PVC. So then we start, what do we do? We start adding more water to the calcium chloride solution until we get um, around 1.12. And as we start adding more of this water, what's going to happen is that um, the, since PVC has a higher density than polystyrene, it's going to sink first. And the one that that remains floating, the polystyrene, that's going to be the last to sink. So the one that uh, that sinks first um, after we've taken the PET out is going to be PVC, and the remain and the one that remains floating is polystyrene. So now we've we've uh, isolated all three of these on this side and all three um, synthetic polymers on this side, and that's how it's done.